Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to the American Songbook at NJPAC. We are taking a look at the extraordinary art form that is the American Songbook through extraordinary performances, and also we'll have an opportunity to talk with the artists afterwards. So please join me in welcoming Maud Megart. <laughs> the cellos for here come the dreamers tell all the fellows to varnish their trumpets butter the crumpets and garnish the cellos let us get to it and do it upright welcome the dreamers with all of our might here come a few of the true Punchinellos, the beautiful dreamers. Here comes a clown in a motley of yellows, made from a gown of Dolores Costellos, giddy and gaudy and body and bright. Here come the dreamers to light up the String up the streamers. Cover the table with strawberry satin. Put out the platinum sugar and creepers and tell every sorrow to slip out of sight. Here come the dreamers to put them to deep 
my musical director, John Boswell. So I know the, the first song, uh, maybe a lot of you have heard the second song, Deep Purple. It's uh, Mitchell Parrish and Peter DeRose. It always sounds like um, Skylark or Stardust, more like, to me. You know, I, Mitchell Parrish is the same lyricist, um, but uh, different composers. Hoagie Carmichael was the other one. Um, that's one of my favorite songs, Deep Purple. And the first one is called Here Come the Dreamers, and that was written by Marshall Barrer. He wrote the lyrics, and Hugh Martin wrote the music to Here, uh, to Here Come the Dreamers. Um, <coughs> those are the songs that I wanted to start with, but here's one. Um, this is a set of songs uh, by Irving Berlin. These are very early Irving Berlin songs. I'm fascinated by Irving Berlin's early life, and um, uh, this is a, a set of two songs from the Music Box Reviews of 19... 23 and 21, and then the second song was written in 1909, but here we start. Oh, I got a message from below, it was from a man I used to know, about a year or so ago before he departed, he is just as happy as can be. I'll tell you what he said to me He said if ever you get heavy hearted Pack up your sins and go to the devil in Hades You'll meet the finest of gentlemen and the finest of ladies They'd rather be down below than up above Hades is full of thousands of Joneses and Browns, Ohula, Hans, Cohens and Brady's You'll hear a heavenly tune that went to the devil because jazz band. They started picking it, then put a trick in it, a jazzy kick in it. There are a couple of old reformers in heaven, making them go to bed at 11. Pack up your sins and go to the devil and you'll never have to go to bed at all. Everybody step to the syncopated rhythm, let's get going with them when they begin. You'll be saying, yes sir, the band is grand. He's the best professor in all the land. Listen to the pep that emerges from the middle of the jazzy fiddle under his chin. Oh, what music. The clarinetta could not be better. Hear that straight. I don't know just what it is, but it's great. They simply ruin it. Look at him doing it. Come, come, don't hesitate. Everybody step if you want to see a glutton when it comes to strutting over the ground. Wait till you see my little sweetie and me. Step, step, stepping around. Think like the grizzly bear would come in here. Satan is waiting with him. Alabama with a melody hot. No one gives a damn if it's music or not. Satan's melody makes you want to dance forever. And you'll never have to go to bed at all. This was originally a, um, a vaudevillian song from 1909. And I, I found this, um, and I know it was supposed to be a humorous song, but I, I thought that I, much, I liked it much better as a love song to a Jewish woman. And you can see where it's kind of a funny song, but I think it's much sweeter than it is funny. Miss Minnie Rosenstein had such a voice, so fine, just like Tetrazzini. Any time that Minnie sang a song You'd think of real estate seven blocks long Some song Young Mr. A. B. Cone used to call to her home Just to hear her singing Presents he was bringing full of bliss One night young A. Proposed to the miss like this. Yiddish a nightingale, sing me a song. Your voice has got such sweetness that it makes me strong. 
You come from extraordinary lineage, you started to say, but your, 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 it goes back to your grandparents, I believe? Yeah, uh, well, m my grandfather was a reed man with the Harry James Orchestra in the late 30s and early 40s, and he, briefly he was their uh, lead male vocalist. And, and uh, my grandmother started out at age 15 as a dancer in the George White Scandals <laughs> on Broadway, and then later she became the girl singer for the Johnny Hamp band, which is where she met my grandfather because he was playing with Johnny Hamp before he joined Harry James. And then your parents met doing applause, which always seems to me kind of yeah. odd. Applause is not a musical you would think of that would lead to this kind of depth of, of performance. <laughs> Sorry, but I feel that way. No, but that is what... Well, the, right. Uh, well, you know, the union itself didn't lead to much else, right. you know, <laughs> but it ended after short time. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, my father played B uh, Buzz, the playwright, and my mom was the original Eve Harrington right. before Penny Fuller. <laughs> and so they kind of fell in love, and then she was replaced by Penny Fuller before they came to Broadway when they were doing Out of Town, but so, that's how they met. So with all of that, what, what was the music around the house? A little bit of everything? Oh yeah, a little bit of everything. I, I knew the score to South Pacific when I was very little because my father was in the show, he played, what is it, Luther Billis, Billis yes, yes. Right. yeah, <laughs> so he did that. Uh, yeah, the, the music around the house was, I mean, honestly, it, both my parents loved Barbara Streisand, so it was a lot of that, so, you know, I, I grew up singing those songs and, and uh, But, but you, you bring an acting truthfulness to these songs that is pretty extraordinary, it's like weaving a spell. You know, back there looking at you at the monitors, it was like we were all like totally captivated. Where did that come from? Acting? Did you want to be an actor? No, not at all. Um, no, my parents were actors. I didn't want to do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was like, 
Uh, well, I think that there is, like my mentor Andrea Marcovici says, each song is like a little play. And when you get those wonderful nuggets of you know, the best songs that, that you and I love, songs from the American songbook, um, they are. They're like little, little plays. There's so much depth there and so much, to, so much really to dig in to as a, as a singer. Because you can go all sorts of ways in your interpretation. Yeah, but that's, I'm you saying know. that it sort of takes an acting singer to take Yiddish and Nightingale, for example, and turn it into that yeah. amazing sort of song of, that was, it's not a, not a joke, as you say. Well, I only saw the lyrics in um, uh, Bob Gimbel's book, in the right. complete lyrics, and I, and I thought, these are great lyrics, and I didn't know what it, I had never heard a recording or anything, so I just, you know, got what it sounded like, the sheet music, and just thought, oh, I'd like to make it sound like this. Kind of like when people are teaching themselves how to play the piano and they don't know what a song sounds like, so you hear all these different versions of, uh, you know, uh, Over the Rainbow or something. Somebody might just look at the sheet music and play it in a completely different way from what it's traditionally heard as. Well, that, that, that's not easy to do, and, and you, you do it extremely well. You said Andrew Marcovici was a, is, a, is a mentor of yours? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were both friends with Marshall Barrett, so really I owe so a lot to, to Marshall Barrett for as much as I make fun of him. But <laughs> he really was, was great. Yes, Andrea was, was a mentor of mine. As you sail away on your holiday, take a last little look at me. I'm an innocent public monument called the Statue of Liberty. And I'm a slave in the home of the brave and the land of the free. Now once my country, France, had a yank romance, so they gave me to Uncle Sam. But he treats me so I no longer know what I'm meant for or who I am. He's made a mess of my chance of success and I'm not worth a damn. I've got those lost Liberty Blues, those lost Liberty Blues, with a pair of handcuffs on my wrists and padlocks on my shoes. Can you expect me to be gay or ask me to enthuse while reformers lead them from the battle cry of freedom to the lost Liberty, Liberty Blues? Well, um, Colt Porter wrote a show called The New Yorkers, and it premiered in, uh, I think, 1931. And uh, this song was one of the songs that, uh, that was uh, premiered in, in the show, which is uh, one of my favorites. And it's kind of another interpretation that I have, kind of like Yiddish and Nightingale. I always saw this as kind of a, a, a sadder song. You can tell where I, you know, what I think about. It's, it's the direction I go in. When the only sound in the empty street Is the heavy tread of the heavy feet That belong to a lonesome cop I open shop When the moon so long has been gazed Of this wayward town That her smile becomes a smirk I go to work Love for sale Young love for sale Love that's fresh and still unspoiled Love that's only slightly soiled Love for sale To 
stood in my doorway so boldly and he whispered of pleasures I'd missed though at first I refused very coldly how long can a lady resist how long can a lady I said no, he said please. I said no, he said please. I said no, he said please, pretty baby. I said no, he said why. I said no, he said why. I said no, he said try. I said maybe. He said, now? I said, well. He said, ah, oh, this is swell. And you'll never know how much it will mean. So at last, I confess. I said, yes, 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 yes. That's how I subscribed to Liberty Magazine. <laughs> that was Frank Lesser and Julie Stein. Um, and here comes uh, another, another uh, songwriting team that I just really love. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein. Um, and uh, this is uh, one song from 1914, another very early song. Uh, it's from The Girl from Utah. And then the second one, uh, I'm sure you'll know, it's much, it's, well, not much later, it's from 1933. Yeah. And when I told Your lips, your eyes, your cheeks, your hair are in 
could see And when I tell them And I'm certainly going to tell them That I'm the girl whose boy one day you'll be They'll never believe me You have you have found gems in the catalog, the great catalogs, and I'm sure there are more gems to be found. But are there other catalogs, other places you think you might want to go? You know, everywhere. I'm just I'm a music lover, so I mean, yeah, sure. I'd like to learn traditional songs from other countries, <laughs> see what their you know traditions are like. But uh, yeah, and there's so much that I don't know about the American songbook still. So I'm really fascinated by that. And and. What guides you in the choices? Is it just instinct, or do you feel, I want to tell this story that goes here, or is it just sort of, oh, that's a ballad, let me f follow it with a funny song, or? Well, it's, it's things like that, sure. I mean, um, you know, I have to respect you and entertain you. I might think something's really interesting, but maybe, you know, you won't. So, <laughs> and that mostly depends on how I do it myself, too, you know, like how I perform it. Uh, but yeah, sure. I, uh, well, I like to mix up different songwriters and and really make a sort of a flow, as you said, in terms of like here's the ballad and then here's something like well, taking the audience on a journey, but taking care of them at the same time. You know, like opening up emotion so that you feel vulnerable, uh, but I'll take care of you, and I won't let you fall too far down or get lost in something frivolous for too long to keep a you know to be master of the ship, 
that way. I know that sounds very not no, very no, clear, it, but no, it's, it, it, it is clear. And do you find that there there are songs that you will take out after you've done? A, I mean, I assume that 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 when you do a set, there's an idea, and then you want to perfect it. And sometimes you do a shorter version of it, sometimes longer version. Mm -hmm. And do you find audiences are helpful in teaching you what works and what doesn't work? Oh yeah, yes, absolutely. So, sure. Well, that. That goes with, uh, you know, I have to respect the audience. And so I might think it's good, but it doesn't really work. Yeah. It's Marshall Bearer again, um, Marshall Bearer, who, who uh, I think that's maybe his, his loveliest song that he wrote. He wrote What is Love, that song with David Ross. Um, and um, there was another Mary that Marshall liked to write with, a good songwriting partner, and that was Mary Jane. He liked to write with uh, Mary Jane. <laughs> he, he, he may have written this one with the help of that sweet girl. <laughs> this is uh, lyrics um, based on the uh, story of Alice, Alice in Wonderland. And Marshall's songwriting collaborator in this case was actually not a collaborator. It was, it's an already finished track of Antonio Carlos Jobim's, one of his most beautiful compositions, Antigua. So Marshall wrote lyrics about the story of Alice in Wonderland to the flute so solo, the flute solo in Antigua. It's a horrible thing to do to a singer. <laughs> but he and Mary Jane and Anto Antonio Carlos Jobim made this little gem. I'm all alone in a place I have never been. I see a door to a garden and wander in. And though my journey is barely begun, I am spun like a top to the top of the universe. And I a spiral of ice, I gaze upon the scene that flickers far below me. And what I see is a crinkle of colors and sound, colors and sound. I can hear tinkles of crystal, and I can see sparkles of mist on the spangles, and I can feel tingles of tangles, and sprinklings of angles, and inklings of angels around. It crosses my path 
unexpectedly I hear a sigh of despair as he passes me I have a feeling that rabbit is late For wherever he's going, whatever he's headed for Is my destination, oh show me the way To stay here in this world Because here's where the right things happen Oh baby, here's where the good things are Looking at this enormous butterfly Wondering if he'd care to dance with me Delicate as a flower carved of chrysophrase Idly I ponder how far have I yet to find it I've got to find it and act as if I've lost it Otherwise I'm lost in wonderland I've got to find it or else I am bound to the empty ground Bleak and vast where dark spells are cast Flooring above me and ceiling below me With chandeliers rising like tremulous towers And tables and chairs and beds hanging Like blossoms of turquoise and purple and green You were asleep so I guess you were not aware I took a walk through your mind and I lingered there But what I found I could never reveal to you Not with my voice of my flute recall it you'll simply have to come walking with me one day into the wonderland shining behind your eyes beyond the gossamer doors of sleep just sleep go to sleep
was not yet born when your career began in 59 so we're a sign of the times but who cares if I am a breath of spring and you are a vintage wine we come from two different worlds like every other couple on the road to Rivoli you spent your youth in Forests of distant Cameroon. Your father was a Navy captain. I am the Queen of Hearts and the daughter of. Speaking of dreams, you took me to see the paintings of Paul Gauguin. Speaking. stopped my heart and then started my life over again and if you feel as I do we've erased the lines between reality and all our painted dreams oh take me down where the gypsies sing the songs their mothers knew tie bright ribbons in my hair I feel as if I've been panning for gold in unlikely places. Such extraordinary nuggets of both known and unknown songs. How did you ever find that extraordinary collection of songs to do so beautifully? Well, Marshall Barrer, because a big chunk of what I did is a lot of Marshall Barrer tunes, he was actually a, a friend of my father's. Uh, so I knew him personally growing up. So I did have a lot of access to his um, you know, sort of trunk songs, the, you know, lesser known material. And Michael Feinstein was a, a mentor of mine. And so, of course, you know, he has the Marshall Barrett catalog. So I was exposed to a lot of that. 
And, and my grandmother and grandfather were both in, part of the big band era with the Harry James Orchestra, and so that's where the, you know, the big band era songs come from. And then um, my mom gave me her Judy Collins and Joan Baez records. So <laughs> there you go. That's how it comes together. Yeah, Marshall Bear. Uh, he's the man who wrote in Once Upon a Mattress, alas, alas is what I lack. Al no, alas, alack, alack. Look at it. It's an extraordinary lyric. It's as good as, <laughs> yeah. it's as, good as anything Stephen Sondheim was writing at that time. And, and it was really, you know, because he was. Marshall would be the first one to tell you that. Yeah, I'm right, sure. <laughs> And he covered his automobile with denim. He was a little eccentric. I rode in that car with him. Yeah. <laughs> it was the scariest experience of my life. I'd never do it again. Go back to the lineage. You, you also have in your family a sister who's a singer, yes? Yes. Yeah. Fiona Apple, Fiona not, Apple. not an unknown person. No. Are, 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 you, uh, are you competitive or are you helping No, helping because no, we, no, we're supportive because what we do is very different. and. Um, I, I think she's just the greatest, you know, I think she's a really, really fantastic songwriter. I mean, she is. And, uh, yeah, no, we're very supportive. We're, you know, we're, we're close. We're, we grew up together in the same apartment. And actually, Fiona is the one that I was thinking of when I said some people teach themselves piano by, and so she would do this. She'd play, you know, the jazz fake book and come up with these strange versions of, of uh, you know, traditional songs. But I think that kind of sparked a, a creativity for her. Do you ever long to, to write your own material? Well, I wish I could. I mean, I tried it and it was pretty bad, so. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do when you're, the bulk of your material is like Cole Porter? How are you gonna follow that, you know? <laughs> it's really hard, so. And so, so what's next on the, on the Maud Maggart? Well, um, what's next is, um, I think, uh, well, I have to find a new cabaret home in New York because these places keep closing. Um, yeah, but I'm, but I'm making, oh, I'm recording a, a new album. Oh, good. I'm, I'm told that Michael Feinstein is going to open a Feinstein somewhere, but he won't tell he, anybody where. Uh, right, here in, yeah. He hasn't told, what is that? Are you asking me if I have no, some no, inside no, no. information? No. I don't. I really don't. I don't know. Have you done 54 Below? No, but I've been there, and that's a beautiful yeah. place. It's a good, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's certainly a, a, a place that supports Cabaret, and we hope we can support it so it can, yeah. it can have, a good, have a good long future. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, listen, thank you very much. This has been wonderful. Thanks so much for being part of this. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for talking to me. You're an expert on all this. <laughs> On the day I was born, said my father, said he, I've an elegant legacy waiting for ye. It is a rhyme for your lips and a song for your heart to sing it whenever the world falls apart. See. 
And I searched all the earth And I scanned all the skies But I found it at last In my own true love's eyes Look, look, look to the rainbow Follow it over the hill and stream Look, look, look to the rainbow Follow the fellow who follows a dream Follow the fellow Follow the fellow who follows a dream. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's Yip Harburg and Burton Lane. <laughs> John Boswell. Thank you, John. Funding for this program.